According to Minchin, obviously well known for their expertise on dogs, beagles have reliable guarding and territorial instincts and are highly protective of the family members, making them a good choice for a watchdog. I guess it makes sense then that they called their print monitoring device Beagle Print. However, HillsPet.com, a 72-year-old business working on dog nutrition, go with a slightly different perspective. They say, don't depend on them to guard your house. They may bark, but are unlikely to do much more than wag their tails if confronted with an intruder. They also add that, if left alone, may howl and become destructive. So, which one is it? The perfect watchdog to protect you while you're gone, or the noisy, destructive friend that makes a mess while you're not looking? Could this finally be what we need to monitor our printers, now that the Raspberry Pi is basically out of stock everywhere? Plus, it also comes with a little extra surprise, which I'll tell you about later, and I have a quick setup guide for those of you that want to get started quickly at the end of the video. According to Minchin, Mintion, Minty, Minchion, the Beagle Print, this is a plug and play camera. It allows you to monitor and control your printer remotely, whilst also making it easier to create time lapse videos. That sounds good. My experiences so far, though, suggest that this might not be entirely accurate, so watch to the end of the video before you go out and replace all of your Raspberry Pis with these. In the box, you get the Beagle Print, a USB power adapter and USB-C cable for power, and a USB cable to connect to the printer. You also get a 32GB SD card, or micro SD card, in the camera, a SIM eject tool for the reset button, and a quick start guide. The inclusion of a pretty large micro SD card is nice, as the time lapse videos can be reasonably big, but it is completely non branded, so I guess the quality is questionable. Maybe don't depend on it too much. Getting started with the camera is certainly not plug and play. A quick sniff through the quick start guide would lead you to find seven steps for getting set up. I followed my nose through these steps, starting with downloading the app, which was an immediate red flag. I then attempted at least 10 times with all four options to try and get the thing configured, and none of the options worked. Not a single one, not once. The only reason I managed to get it working now is that my contact at Midgen actually sent me a link to their blog, which has instructions for a number of things, including a manual configuration for the Wi-Fi. So you put like text files on the SD card and put it in and turn it on kind of thing. And by doing that method, I got it connected in like three shakes of a dog's tail. The blog though, isn't mentioned anywhere in the quick start guide or on the main website at all. So I don't know how else I was supposed to find that. Once that process was out of the way though, it was quite easy then to connect the printer, upload files and get a time lapse. Surprisingly smooth process once I'd got connected to it. It's also worth mentioning at this point though that the Beagle Print is only compatible with some printers. Presumably because of the way they do their like auto configuration thing, they have to like read the G code and do the time lapse and the plug has to be right, just basic stuff. So this is the compatibility list. So assuming you managed to jump over the tool barrier to entry and smell your way to the time lapse settings, what are the rewards for your efforts? Well, pictures like this and videos like this. Yeah, not great. Firstly, the video is clearly not in focus. So I looked through the settings for autofocus, but found nothing. See to me, obviously it's this uh, like big dial on, no, it's not that. So following the scent then all the way back to the blog, again, I found an article on camera focus where it explains the process of printing a calibration chart using a ruler, printing a jig to put the camera on for no apparent reason, and then disassembling the camera to adjust the lens. <laughs> what? Do I really need to explain why this is terrible? Honestly, <laughs> how, how is that the solution? The next problem is lighting, right? Like many cheap webcams, unless the lighting is perfect, <laughs> the image will be terrible. It's, it's no exception here. So to solve that, they, uh, wait for it, <laughs> they included an infrared LED so you can take pictures in the dark. <laughs> Why? Why is that a thing? Uh, that is not a solution to that problem. <laughs> Has anyone ever asked for infrared nighttime printing camera? Like, just put a few bright high CRI LEDs and enable them as a flash, or like have a button in the web interface to turn them on. Like, 
It doesn't need to be that difficult. Why IR? There's just no need for that. Let's say, for some reason, you did need to print in total darkness at all times and can't use any visible light. Luckily, in addition to having the black and white IR mode, <laughs> there's also a full colour night mode. Presumably it uses some like AI processing to enhance the image, you know, and add colour to a normally black and white version like they do with like old films. No, it's just, it's just a normal camera and it's so dark you can't see anything. <laughs> Amazing, the future technology. So by adding my own lighting, which you'd probably need anyway for long prints since you know like daylight is always changing, that kind of thing, and fixing the focus and standing it on a little box or something to get it at the right height, this is the best video quality I could get. Yeah, I'm really not impressed either. The colors look just awfully bad, like they're kind of wrong and they're just faded and blah. It's, the image is like all over sharpened yet somehow still looks blurry. The lens is really distorted and the angle isn't even that wide. So how is it that distorted? It just looks like a complete potato quality camera to me. For checking to see if a print has failed or something while you're away, it works. But beautiful time-lapse videos, these are not. Unfortunately, there are other time-lapse problems too. We'll cover those in a second for now. Let's look at the interfaces, because this is where it gets even better. <laughs> Before we look at that though, I just wanted to let you know that VLMP, the Vertical Linear Motion Press for threaded inserts, is now available for pre-order at Vector3D.co.uk. It's a batch drop, so the sooner we get enough orders, the sooner we can start purchasing hardware and shipping to you. So be sure to share with others that might be interested. Also, subscribe to the channel and the website newsletter if you want to be notified about other cool things like this one. Right, where were we? Yes, I remember the interfaces. There are a number of ways to interface or interact with the Beagle Print. The first being the web interface, the second being the speaker, and the third is that nice little surprise I mentioned earlier. When you open the device to focus your camera, you find a microphone. Right, let's not car carry it away here. There's a lot to unpack. I'm sure you've got a lot of questions, <laughs> like I did. <laughs> Firstly, the web interface. It's quite standard, actually, about what you'd expect, only more difficult to find things than you'd want. It's like they copied Octoprint's interface and then randomly shuffled things around to make it look different. There are three ways to preview your G-code, all on separate tabs, but it's only shown here after you click print because the load function doesn't work. This is what the interface looks like by default. And here are a few simple modifications that I've made to make it just slightly easier to use. This took me about 10 minutes, so let me know if you think it's better. There are so many little annoying things wrong with this interface that I'm not going to cover them all. It does work, it is functional, but it is annoying to use. I found a positive thing though, you can click this button here for a quick snapshot of the temperatures and this one over here to capture the webcam. They both work. Amazing. Let's carry on. Next we have the speaker, which is actually quite a good idea, expanding the accessibility of the device so that it improves usability for those with a missing or lost sense, maybe loss of sight for example. Except the only thing the speaker does is tell you when Wi-Fi is connected. connected to the wi -Fi. What about like print start and finish? Maybe progress updates every 10% or so. At the very the least, announce when there's an error so that I need to take action and actually you know, do something, not when everything performed as expected. That is just annoying. Also, there is no volume adjust, so I hope you like the volume it's at. Honestly, this is probably the biggest missed opportunity in the whole thing. It could have been really useful for those that need it, but in the end, it's just kind of a waste of time. Successfully connected to the Wi-Fi. The last interface is the surprise microphone. Why is it a surprise? Well, its functionality is not mentioned anywhere on the main webpage or in the blog or even in the Quick Start Guide. Its existence is mentioned in the Quick Start Guide, it just says microphone here, but I missed that entirely and only discovered it when I opened it up to adjust the focus. So does it add voice control to improve the accessibility of the device? Of course not. 
Uh, at best, it does nothing, and at worst, it's literally recording you. When buying products with bespoke apps, hidden microphones, and 24-7 camera monitoring, including night vision, from anywhere in the world, apparently, one has to consider the security and privacy implications, of course. Speaking of access from anywhere, though, I still don't actually know how that's meant to work. It seems like it's entirely down to the user to like do IP address forwarding or something and just have your internal network open to anyone that can guess your password. There certainly isn't any auto configuration or cloud service or anything like that. So as far as I'm concerned, you access from anywhere as long as you're at home within your Wi-Fi area. The default password for the web portal is admin. I know this because it's written on the login page. <laughs> Definitely change this if you plan on using it for more than 10 seconds. The inclusion of a microphone without any listed functionality is obviously massively concerning and it's not open source, so you can't check what the software is actually doing with that device or those recordings or anything. So, bit of a gamble. I'm not a cybersecurity expert, you can probably tell. I need to retrain in cyber, as it were but I would consider this device unsafe for privacy, even more so if you open it outside of your internal network, if for some reason you decided to do that, which I don't recommend. Despite the other issues we've uncovered through this review, there is one part that surely will be still great, the print quality. Literally, all this thing has to do is nothing. Do nothing and the print quality will stay the same. Nope, failed again. Until recently, it didn't even have retraction settings in the setup, but now it's still missing Z-Hop, so it scrapes all across your prints for every step in the time-lapse, which is basically every layer, and it's not only loud and annoying, but also leaves blobs all over the print, and will rip any smaller prints just straight off the bed, so good luck with that. Apart from that, it's fine. So now let's work out if this is worth buying. This year especially, I've really tried to focus on the positives when making reviews. Not to the point of ignoring major flaws, just so I can avoid making an angry ranty video, because there have been tough times for everyone and focusing on the positives helps me if nothing else. Unfortunately, the Beagle print has broken me to the point that I'm beginning to think the whole thing is literally a joke, but let me try and at least finish on some sort of productive note at the very least. You may have found this video looking for a Raspberry Pi alternative, it makes sense. Technically, I suppose it does do some of those things. You can upload files and send them to the printer. You can use the camera to look at the printer using the web interface. And you can even control the motion and temperature, and there's a graph. If that is what you're after, this product does do those things. And you'll want to see my short guide at the end of the video. But bear in mind, I would still consider the security issues a deal breaker. I do have to be really honest here though. The setup process doesn't work. It's not plug and play, the web interface is unintuitive, the camera quality is poor, and the time-lapse feature leaves a mess all over your prints. We should also take a moment to admire that the Beagle print <laughs> doesn't even look like a Beagle. It's more like a Dalmatian, I think. Looking through other review videos of this product online leads me to believe that Minchin are basically using YouTubers to test their products and then improve them based on what they said, making their review that's just been made basically useless because they correct the things that were mentioned. So I really look forward to this video having absolutely no purpose in four weeks time. Thank you very much Minchin, I'll be sending you the bill for 30 hours of product testing. I do apologise though actually to all the returning viewers for making this video feel like a bit of a rant, but there were so many issues with this product that it's just abundantly clear it hasn't been tested. I really have to call into question at this point how the product has so many other reviews without being heavily criticised and even within the company how, it's, how this became a thing that it is now. It really is baffling to me. That's my thoughts though. What do you think? Is this one to keep to yourself or would you mention it to your friends? <laughs> oh dear. Here's my setup guide for anyone looking to actually use one for some reason. Number one, unbox and plug in as normal. Two, manually configure the Wi-Fi using the SD card method. Number three, get the IP address and check the functionality using the web interface just to see that it is actually working. Number four, disable the time lapse and other video settings from the web interface. Number five, disassemble the whole bloody thing and focus the camera to where you need it to be. Unplug the microphone and the speaker because they're basically useless and they're annoying. Number six, reassemble the whole thing, set up in a location where you 
going to find it useful for your camera to your printer. Number seven, use it for uploading files and starting prints, doing some basic monitoring. So that's it from me today. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.